June 5th, 1980 changed the path of my life and set my career in motion for this noble business we call life insurance. I was six years old. I woke up early that morning. I remember asking mom, where's dad? She assumed he had stayed overnight at his cousin's house. Shortly thereafter, there was a knock on the door. I saw the police. Mom tells me there was also a priest, but by that time, I had retreated to the hallway. Mom requested that I go to my room. But of course, being a curious six-year-old, I was in the hall, peeking around the corner. I just recalled the faint murmurs. Your husband, I heard. Then a few minutes later, Mom cried, Timmy, too? I ran back to the front door to see what was going on. It was then that I learned my dad and his brother were killed in the same drunk driving accident. Mom was only 24 and now solely responsible for me. And as it turned out, there was no life insurance. Mom learned about Social Security survivor benefits from the funeral home, but at the end of the day, the money wasn't enough. My dad was 26 when he died. My aunt, who had a one-year-old child, received even less, as my uncle was just 22 at the time. Social Security benefits cannot be the only source of income after the loss of a loved one. It might cover 40% of lost wages. As such, Mom worked two part-time jobs to make ends meet, one at a nursing home and one in retail. Thankfully, I had grandparents on both sides who could take care of me, but still, I can't imagine the stress my mother must have felt back then, worrying about basic living expenses, never mind having money for an emergency fund or thinking about my college education. In that dark time, I wish we had an advisor who could have alleviated some of that financial stress with the delivery of a death benefit check. Someone who could tell us, I can't take away your grief, but I can make sure you don't have to worry about finances on top of it. He or she would have been a superhero. Life insurance can be the single light in a family's very dark time. I'm tired of life insurance having an image problem. I'm sure many of you have experienced what it's like to have a chatty Kathy on the train ride home. Easiest way to get rid of them? Tell them you work in life insurance. <laughs> Watch how quickly the earbuds go in. They can't get them in fast enough. I've been asked at parties what I do, and then people literally move away from me as fast as they can. <laughs> it's like I've suddenly turned into the Grim Reaper and they're going to drop dead just by talking to me. I'm tired of life insurance getting a bad rap. No one thinks twice about car insurance or home insurance, yet it's a whole different story with life insurance. Well, I'd argue that family is our most valuable asset and deserves to be protected. The problem is, people think about life insurance for what it is or how it's sold, not what it does. The only way we are going to get millions of consumers the protection they need is if we change our image. But I get it. No one likes to think about what happens at the end. I hate to break the news, but there's actually a 100% chance of dying, and not everyone is insuring for it. John Hancock has made tremendous strides in making life insurance relevant to today's consumer. We've changed the conversation from death to living a longer, healthier life. It's a game changer. We need the rest of the industry to join us. Let's stop moving that little coffin across the kitchen table at our prospects. Life insurance has come a long way over the years. We all have plenty of living benefits and riders we can lead with. We need to keep talking about using the policy throughout life. The other thing we need to do as an industry is concentrate our stories and our marketing on loved ones. 
help clients view their decision to buy life insurance from their family's viewpoint. They are protecting their family's financial future. It's a sign of love. The other problem the industry has is that consumers overestimate the cost of life insurance by at least three times. But we have no problem spending money on cell phones, internet, streaming services, and Starbucks on a regular basis. Life insurance is not a luxury. If you have someone depending on you, it is a necessity. We all need to come together to continue to educate the public on just how inexpensive life insurance can be. Besides, you cannot put a price on peace of mind. Many of us in this room work with firms and advisors in our roles, not the end consumer. But in the spirit of customer obsession and Life Insurance Awareness Month, remember, there are families behind every application, and we are part of their stories. We should be proud of what we do. Ultimately, we help families stay in their home after the loss of a loved one. We make sure children go to college, even if their parents aren't around to see it. We help grandparents leave a legacy to their grandchildren, and we assist the business owner in transferring the business to the next generation. How wonderful to be able to say, your spouse, mother, father, or grandparent loved you so much that they put a plan in place. Because as they say, life insurance isn't for you. It's for those you leave behind. And the six-year-old me would have given anything to have some. Thank you.